You could just tell from their general demeanour in that post-match interview just how emotionally invested and almost perhaps mm. drained they have been after playing 90 minutes of what, after what went on with, yeah. with the fitness coach. Yeah, it was, it was, it's been a very difficult week. They've had an away game in Europe as well and they've had to travel and all them things to prepare. But it's, it's, you know, it's, it's been a very emotional time. It takes energy out of you as a group of players as well. You know, he's, he, you, know you could see contact at the beginning of the game. He was really affected in that minute's applause. Um, in a way, I saw him, he didn't want to clap. No. He was rubbing his hands, he was, but it was, it was affecting him in a big way. It must have been very close. Uh, and I think the staff probably would have felt it even more than the players. Yeah, Harry Kane, very close to being very emotional there, Darren. <coughs> and it just goes to show, I suppose, maybe these, this set of Spurs players deserve a bit more credit to you know, putting, trying to put one thing aside to focus on the job in hand. Yeah, I mean, I think we even spoke about it at the start about maybe it galvanising them before the game, wanting to get the result for him. Um, and they, they certainly did that today. Maybe they weren't at their absolute best, but mm. they got the result. I thought, as I said, they handled their emotions, kept them in check, played with quite consistency in there, you'd have to say, were hard to play against. Um, and I think he'll be proud of the result that they've got. And the most important thing for Antonio Conte, as you saw at the end, when he's fist pumping the fans, he's still, he's still a winner at the end of the day. Mm. And obviously they've had a tough, tough week. And that was almost like that, the kind of icing on the cake, right, we've got the result, mm. we move on. And he was delighted at the end of the game. Mm. And it's three points in the, and that's what they're, they're after. Glenn, how big a win is that, considering what happened in the North London derby? Yeah, I think it's been a good week for them after what happened. That's a massive game, massive blow if you lose it, they've lost it. As I say, went to Europe, got a, got a point there, a vital point there for the Champions League. And now they've come off the back and they've won the three points. Now, Did that lay the foundations in midweek, do you think? Yes, I do. I, I thought they played really well in midweek. They, they pressed a lot higher. They had more energy in trying to win the ball back higher up the pitch. And they played with some really good approach work. It was their final ball, their final shot at goal, which was a little bit similar early on in the game. But um, I, was, I was impressed with Tottenham the first 15, 20 minutes. I thought Brighton were going to come at them in big time after Liverpool first home game for De Zerbi. And in the end, Tottenham just took the ball away from them. And I think that was the best spell Tottenham had was in the first 20 minutes. They managed to score at the back end of it. And, you know, they saw the rest of the game out. It was up to Brighton for me to open Tottenham up. And they couldn't do it because that back five stayed intact, the midfield stayed intact. And as Darren's just said, they were very difficult to play through. Let's have a look then at the all-important goal uh, for Tottenham and for Harry Kane. Mm. How good a finish is this from him, Darren? Yeah, it's really good, but as I said, it, it, we come to expect that from Harry Kane. Really clever movement, keeps himself onside, just picks up a little bit of space, but uses the pace of the ball. Doesn't try and flick his head at it and really get enough power. The power's already on the cross. So all it's about him doing is, is directing it, really. And where the goalkeeper is, I mean, again, from there, Bryant's perspective, all ball watching, no one's checking what's going on behind them. And Harry Kane obviously knows that, keeps himself onside. As I said, he doesn't really throw his head at it. He doesn't really try and turn it. He just tries to get enough on it and get hit the target. And he does it. He catches the keeper off guard, as you can see, because the keeper expected to come and claim it. Really good header. It's just a reaction. It's instincts. It's reaction. It's like a, a batsman, a, a bouncer coming at you, a real yeah. 90 mile an hour. You just have to play off instinct. Look, and there's the little point there, pointing upstairs, and we know we know exactly who that was for. That was yeah. for you. And uh, that was, it, was, it was a really clever goal in many ways because he had split seconds to react. He just gets a little glance. Strikers know where the goals are. The goals don't move. He knows where he is. His ge geography on the pitch was just, I just need a glance this. Mm. And it all happens that quick. Yeah, it takes his tally to eight. Um, he's still some seven goals behind Erling Haaland, which, you know, eight is a good return <laughs> at this stage of the season. No, but eight is an outstanding return. Yeah, yeah. Okay. unfortunately I stand for, for, for Haaland, 15, I mean, that is just things we've not seen before, but mm. Harry, by his own standards, is having a, another phenomenal season. But it's just unfortunate that someone's come, obviously, to the Premier League in Erling Haaland and is putting up numbers at this stage of the season that we've never seen before. Yeah, and you made the point when we were talking during the break because, you know, his... His difficulties during the month of August has been yeah. well publicised. He's overcome that. Yeah. Uh, and even with that in mind, that should be still, you know, highly rated, that return. Oh, no, yeah. He's, he has started, you know, and as you say, other seasons he didn't start till September. Yeah. Now he's done that. And, you know, I still think Harry could end up with some, some great numbers, which he's on course for. But whether Haaland stops still, <laughs> I don't think so. That's the problem. Yeah. But what about... Tottenham's approach generally, you're encouraged by the fact that this was more front foot from Antonio Conte, something that we haven't quite seen before. Certainly from the start of the game, yes. I think uh, they're pressing a little bit higher. 
um, rather than just dropping in. If, if they lose possession and, and, and your opponents, whoever they are, mm. are in the halfway line, then they'll drop deep and then they'll be very stubborn to get through. And there's nothing wrong with teams do that. To be honest, Brighton did that in the early stages, which I was surprised. I thought they were going to go pressing and go on the front foot. But I think, you know, I think Conte's a shrewd manager. He's an experienced manager. I think he's un slowly un unleashing them. Right. He's just taking the handbrake off a little bit by little. And I think, you know, playing the three in midfield uh, this week, I think he wanted to do that against Arsenal, but Basuma wasn't quite 100% fit. So I think there's a new couple of little systems he's working on to try and, try and change that. So another great three points for Tottenham, but slight progression this week from, from Frankfurt game to today. Small steps. Small steps. Yeah. They had a couple of chances. Matt Doherty making his first start of the season had one of them. Just to make the... The victory a little bit more comfortable. In fact, his decision making here, what do you think before we get to that chance? Yeah, he's got to get it across the box. I mean, if he plays with his head up, then sessegnon has got to tap him. But if from that angle, another angle, he never once looks across, he looks at the goal. Mm. And even this one, Glenn was talking about it, he should, he should meet it on the volley. He's got to try and work hard enough to get over the top of that ball and get it on the volley there. This is like a little flick that he knows what he's doing there. Again, it's the geography of the pitch. This is the one for me. This is where Spurs could have won. Look, he turns Dunk really well, and you're expecting him to hit the target. Some, you know, it's very unusual he hasn't hit the target from there on his right foot. And they're the little things that I think Spurs need to go for the next level to get that two goals. Once they go two goals up, it seems like they play like a different team. Yeah. And in, in the past, the results have shown that. They need that second goal to just ease things and make them play with a bit more... I don't know, as I said, arrogance, but a bit more belief in themselves. Mm. Mm. Son had the ball in the back of the net, but it was given as offside. Mm. And you can't really argue against that. Mm. Clearly, that's down to you know, VAR and whatnot. But decent finish in the end. Well, it's the typical Son, isn't it? Left or right foot. This, that is his type of finish, where he gets it in and around either the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the box, shifts it onto the, the left side there, and just uses these instep and just whips it into that far corner. We've seen him do that so often. I mean... For instance, his hat-trick against Leicester, he's got two that were identical to that, coming in from that right-hand side, steadying himself down and just using the defender, pulling in that far I corner. I think it just shows you, Vel I think it was Veltman, he was still on at the pitch there, he's the one that stepped up. Yeah. He was going to go yeah. back with Son, and Son, he would have been onside. And at the last second, just as the ball's being played, he just steps up mm. and allows Son to just be offside, yeah. which is the difference. It's good defending. Uh, Doherty starting, did he give Conte anything to think about today or not? Could have done. He was so close to having what I would have said, you know, a really good game back in after his injury. Um, he's just got to go that next level. He does some good things, but then he does some unusual things. And he's, he's trying to work his own game out at the moment. He was getting better and better, actually, getting mm. the confidence before he had the injury. I think he's now got to start again. Mm. He's got an opportunity. You know, Emerson's out for a few games, two more, is it now? Yeah. So he's got an opportunity, you know, maybe won't play in the European game. But, you know, next week against Everton, he'll be back in there.